honor to be here as well. How are you? I'm good. I've just ordered a Chinese. So currently now I've been doing packaging up all of my merch orders and then I have a Chinese after this interview. So I am good. <laughs> Starts with this. Lana Bone is a such multi-talented artist who write, mm -hmm. produce, uh, sing, rap, and scream as hell. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, when did you start singing? I started when I was 12 and I was really shy when I first started singing. And I did a few competitions at school, um, but I'd say I started to take it seriously when I was 15. I'd say 15. Okay. Um, I want to know a little, a little more about how it all started for you. So you were touring with your band, uh, Hands Off Gretel, right? Yeah. And then you start hearing some stuff from younger. Uh, those younger were harassed in your crowd. So after that, you try to speak out about yes. those problems, right? Some responses um, makes you start to make you angry, mm -hmm. right? Yes, definitely. And then you start writing about the whole situation. So is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes, that is right. Um, I did. I spoke out about how I was being treated and also how girls were being treated, feeling uncomfortable coming to my shows. And I always prioritize girls' safety. That's something really, really important to me. So when girls started to tell me they felt unsafe, I knew I had to just address the issue and just put it out there and say, this is something that's been happening at happening at my shows and if anyone's seen any of this behavior we need to work together to kind of make it a better environment and yeah people attacked me and said they they attacked the way that I dressed which is weird they they said that I will never be respected the same as a male artist because when I stand on stage I wear outfits that are too revealing and, and that really upset me because they were saying that I was kind of asking for it because of the way I dressed. And I, I thought that was like an old mentality. I didn't think people still thought that way. So it opened up a new can of worms for me. And I just, like you said, I just felt angry and had all these things I wanted to say, but also my, my mental state was terrible because I was arguing with people online and then having to get up and play shows. And I just wanted to go into my bedroom and hide. <laughs> yeah. I think I like social media. I enjoy having a platform to talk about issues that I'm passionate about. But then at the same time as well, people, people say whatever they want without any consequences. And it's hard. It's like a constant battle in my head. Like, I want to talk about things, but then also I'm really an emotional person. So if people attack me, it, I find it really hard to deal with. Yeah, I understand. Today, you start your project with the Lila Bone, okay? Mm -hmm. So what is the real message behind the music of the Lila Bone? Because she comes and she destroys every single thing, you know? <laughs> She uh, played to uh, uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Could you um, tell me a little more about this character? I think that is a good way to say it, really. I imagine Delilah is, she is like my superhero and my evolved form. So if I was to pick her, she would be a character on Mortal Kombat. She would be my, my strong, empowered like boss woman and yeah she her message is just like no filter unapologetic I just want her to be like middle finger up to everyone and she's just gonna say how she feels and incorporate like a sassiness but also with the like a rain also did you expect to have such a support um I was I was nervous at first because 
I thought people were either going to hate it or really love it. And luckily, most people love it. And I've found such a community that I didn't have before and connected with so many people with the music. The music's connected across TikTok, lots of TikTok new fans. Yeah. And, and that's been amazing. And I have had a few people dislike it, but I love what I'm doing so much that I don't really mind if they don't like it because you've always just got to do what you enjoy and I enjoy it. So whatever. <laughs> Uh, if you have to describe your music to um, the old generation, <laughs> what would you say? Um, well, I, I think the genre of music would be punk-influenced hip-hop music because it has the screaming in it, it has the attitude of punk where it is this aggressive message, but then also it has the kind of It has elements of pop as well and hip hop and rap. So yeah, I think it's like, I call it brat punk. That's my word that I used, yeah. which means the brat is the attitude part. It's the, the brattiness and then the punkiness. And I imagine, yeah, I would say that it's like a punk meets hip hop sound. Okay, thank you. So, um... Yeah, lockdown, uh, in a way, was hell for a lot of people, you know, because mm -hmm. they don't like to be uh, uh, confined, yeah. you know. But yeah. not for you. You clearly no. have the choice to be there for your community. <laughs> yes. Uh, could you tell me a little more about lockdown and uh, how lockdown was for you? Um, well, before lockdown, I was on tour with my band. Yeah. And I was, I was quite suffering on tour because of people online and people online would come to gigs and, and things were, things were being said. I remember I was on tour and somebody threw a drink at me on stage and people, people were tending to be like, this is just horrible to me in real life. And then I was becoming anxious and I didn't want to play gigs anymore. And I told the band, I need to take a break. Like when the tour is done, I need to take a break and just be on my own for a while. I've just spent so much time with people that I just need some me time. But then lockdown happened at that same time. So just when I said I needed a break, it was on the news. Now we can't play gigs. So it came at a very, very good time for me to be able to kind of stop everything and go back to the drawing board and and just think about what I really want to do in my life and to be able to create for myself and just make things just for myself without having to include anybody else and I've I've felt like I've grown so much in lockdown I've become more confident and I've become happier even though obviously what's happening in the world is horrible Yeah. I found I found like a kind of like a peace inside myself that I I didn't have before lockdown. First everything, could you tell me a little more about Trash Queen Records? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That is that is a label I created myself. Um and I release all my music on that. So I've got Uh, I've got a solo album under the name Lauren Tate on that and I just all of my projects I put under that label that is my own my own thing I'm the okay. boss of Trash Cream Records so it's is that important for you to to have your own label yeah um because before I I didn't I didn't call it anything I just didn't I just never mentioned any because I was unsigned and having my own independent name it's like it's more professional now it's like yes I do everything myself I produce I write I record and I am the label I do it all and I'm proud to say that I can do that that's super cool because uh, mm -hmm. you did you do um everything by yourself and uh, this is really encouraging mm -hmm. I mean, you you show to the girl to everybody that Yeah, you can be whatever you want. You can do whatever you want in this mm -hmm. life. Yeah, that's super cool, really. To oh, hear. thank you. 
Now, the Lila Bond, the, the, the new album, will be out in five days. So how do you feel about that? Um, I feel... <sighs> I feel excited and I feel ready because I've listened to these songs so much now. I know them inside out. I know I've, I've loved them. I've listened to them in my car. I've danced to them and I've imagined everybody else dancing to them. So yeah, I'm ready for people to hear it. I think, I think people will love it. And yeah, I'm, I'm confident about it. I just, I love what I've created and I just want everybody to hear it. That's cool. We discovered um, uh, Soul Sister, the music video, this Friday. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so the, the response of the fan was really great. So mm -hmm. could you tell me a little more about uh, your uh, music video? So how did you work on it? Usually with my music videos, I have, I have huge ideas in my head and I don't have the budget for those ideas. I don't have the team or the space. So usually I, I work with my mum. So my mum films my music videos and I tell her my, my ideas and then, and then we kind of make them more realistic together and say, what can we do that's not going to cost much money? And the Solstice's video I filmed in my, my garage. So I made, all, I made all the backdrop. I painted all the mannequins and I did everything like we went to the shop to buy a magazine and then I stuck the magazine pages on the wall yeah. and the videos there's a lot of hard work to create the visuals because it just it starts from nothing we have no team and my mum is she films them and she's had to learn so much on YouTube so she watches YouTube videos on cameras and lighting um but I love I love being able to create things on my own like that because you don't have to spend thousands of pounds to create something that people will enjoy. Yeah. And there's always a message on your yeah. music video. And mm -hmm. it's here. <laughs> yeah. How uh, do you work on your music? I mean, what is the process of writing and uh, composing? Because you do every single thing. I mean, mm -hmm. this yeah, crazy. you did everything on your album. I did. Yeah. I um, I usually, well, I do this. So I grab my phone like this, and I and I sing ideas into my phone. So I'll be walking down the down the road, or I'll be. Yeah, yesterday I was on a walk with my dog, and I didn't take my phone with me on the walk, and I I had an idea in my head, so I started humming like. And then I was walking home like, duh, 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 duh. don't forget this, don't forget this. And it's cool. I, and I sing, so I sing everything into my phone. I like sing a vocal and then I sing a bass line. Everything sang into my phone. And then I take my phone into the studio and then I like tab it. So I'm, I try and play it on bass, I play it on keyboard. And I create entire songs around little voice notes. And, and I've just been able to create so many songs doing that and just, just thinking, right, I can, I can use any instrument. It doesn't have to be guitar. It could be keyboard. It could be bass. And I've written so many songs now because I've just unlocked, I've unlocked the key to how I can create and it's by singing everything. Okay, so you start with the, the, the music and then... Mm -hmm with the, the lyrics right? yes yeah, so yeah. the, the lyrics is the final piece i usually i usually know what the song's going to be about like i have a subject and and i think this song's going to be like an angry song about this or this song's going to be more of a fun song kind of thing and then the final piece is starting to write my lyrics and that's like like the very last part would be the lyrics and that's my favorite part what is the story behind I don't listen to you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <Okay>. So, <laughs> that. So, I, I knew I wanted to write. How did I? St I did it. So, originally, that was just a one minute song for TikTok. And I just wanted to create something that was just like a aggressive rage 
out. I can wear what I want. I don't have to listen to you. My body is my choice and I can dress for me. And like that experience came from me with past relationships. So with a boyfriend in the past, if I, if I was to wear something, he'd tell me to change and say, I don't want you to wear shorts in summer. I want you to go upstairs and I want you to change back into your trousers. And he'd feel because other boys would look at me that I was his property and that he didn't want anyone else to look at me. So when I was with him, I'd have to wear like a jacket and I'd have to cover myself up. So that made me feel like I wasn't confident in myself. Like I had to hide myself. So years later, I write the song, I Don't Listen to You. And I put it on TikTok and just the instantly people were saying, I need the, I need the full song. Like I need, I need this on my phone. I want to listen to this in my car. So I, in a week, I wrote the song, I produced the song, I wrote all the instruments and I released the song just because people were so excited about that one minute clip that I went in and focused in the studio and all of the videos the girls sent me. Did you see the yeah. videos? Did? Yes. Oh, amazing. My mate is on your video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yes. That <laughs> French girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we were both in love with your music. We were like, this is it. This is yeah. the song. <laughs> this oh, is the song you. of 2021. Come on, girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, when people started sending videos for the song, instantly I noticed it's like you've got plus size girls yeah. and just like every single kind of girl you could imagine made videos to my song. And seeing, seeing that my message resonated with so many different people, mm. like that made me know like I'm doing the right thing because sometimes I worry because obviously... I don't know, I don't want my message to be seen that it's not for everybody. I want my message to be for everybody. And that video proved it. It just proved like this message speaks to so many people. So many people need this message. So yeah, I, I really, with lockdown, I've not been able to make videos with people. It's all been, my, it's all been me because you can't mix with other people. But once lockdown's over, I just want to, I want to involve more people in my music videos and always have that diversity because it's just not, you just don't see it in music videos. You just hear people all the time. And I think it's so important for like young girls to just see people that look like them. Yeah. Gave us something strong. Yeah. You mm -hmm. gave us this energy. It's crazy. Really. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that is, that is all I want to do with my music. That is, the purpose of Delilah Bond is to make people feel strong because you should feel strong. And that is my mission complete. <laughs> what is your favorite track on this new album and why? Um, hmm. This always changes all the time <laughs> because when I first wrote the album, I think my favorite was Bad Attitude. I, I loved that one. After I wrote it, I put it on my car and I turned my car up so loud, like this is the anthem of the song, of the album. But then the more I've listened to the album, I start to like, I like Chikatita quite a lot. That one, I enjoy that one because when I wrote that, the message for that one is I'm singing to an older woman. And the idea is I'm singing to an older woman that stays at home with her husband. She doesn't get out much and she's kind of forgotten who she is. And then I imagine that she's come to my gig and I spot her and I say, right, come on. What's, what's a woman like you doing at the back? Get on stage. And I bring her up on stage. <laughs> so when I listen to that song, I feel like, yes, I, I love that one. So I would say, I would say Chikatita is probably my favorite right now. Okay. What is a day like in the shoes of the Lila Um, It is busy, very busy. <laughs> uh, I, I, every day I'm either in the studio writing and recording or I'm making content. I, I do so many videos of myself in the garden dancing to songs and just, I like getting dressed up so 
every day I try and get dressed up. I do my makeup different all the time and I love playing with clothes and accessories. But then the other side of that is me. I do have days off sometimes, not not much. I am a workaholic, I'd say. And that's something that I'm bad at. I'm bad at taking breaks because I get so focused on what I'm doing that like taking a break, it's, it's hard. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, very busy, busy. About the story um, around this collab that you did with the boy dancer. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, um, I can't remember how he found me or if I found him. I, I don't know if it was SoundCloud. I can't remember, but we found each other somehow on social media and I would, I would comment on his music and he would comment on my music and we kind of made friends during lockdown. Um, but then, yeah, he contacted me and said he'd written a song. He can hear my voice on it. He's imagined me featuring on the song. And I said, oh, um, I'm a little bit busy because I'm recording my album. I don't think I can do it. But then I went into the studio. It was like the next day. And I thought, I'll just listen to it. And then I put it on and I thought, I'll attempt, I'll try for a few hours and write something. And if I can't write anything, then I'll just tell him that I don't really have time. Mm. But as soon as I heard the song, I had an idea instantly. And then I put my vocals down in a day and I sent it to him and he was like, oh my God, I love it. It's perfect. Um, and that was really fun. That was the first collaboration I've ever done. I've never done a collaboration before. So... Okay. So that was new and I, I enjoyed it. It was nice for someone else to just take the mix and go and mix it and me just sit and wait for the final result. It was great. What is your dream collab? I mean, if it's happened one day, someone come to you and ask you again. Um, hmm. I see, I love, I love Ashniko. I oh. think she's amazing. I love Ash Nico and I really, I really like Princess Nokia as well. And they recently did a song together and I listened to it and I was just like, I need to be on that song as well. <laughs> oh. I love them. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Laila. I'm so happy to be with you again and uh, oh, to know you. a little more about you, about your music. So one maybe last uh, question about your influences when you were young i mean which oh, yeah. band or musician uh, did you like to listen to um i think i've listened to, i've had so many like phases of loving certain people but one person that i come back to all the time and especially with delilah bon i think it, i've gone back to my teenage self is pink oh. and her music she was like the underdog. She was the, the weird kid. The, she was so different to everyone else at that time in pop music. She was like the badass. Mm -hmm. And when I found her music, I'd just, I'd sit in the toilets at school. When it was dinner time, I used to sit on my own in the toilets and I used to put my earphones in and try and just disappear from school because I hated school. And I'd listen to Pink and I used to just think one day, I will be the pink, I will be like pink for someone else. They'll listen to me in the toilets and everything pink said was just like, it's like she was speaking so directly to me. Um, and she's inspired me always because I think of the impact she had on me as a teenager. And if I can be that for someone else, then that is what success means to me. Um. Now, um, I, I, I hope that concerts are going to, to be back again. So mm -hmm. did you um, manage something, you know, so some concerts, some live music for the... Um, I, I plan, yeah, I, I want to start making plans for next year. Mm -hmm. I've, had, I've had so many people request that I play at their gigs and is the the response has been amazing for that. Like people wanting me to perform at their festivals at different shows. Um, so I think, yeah, there'll be lots, there'll be lots of opportunities next year for me to play some Delilah Bond songs. I can't wait. I just, I think the songs is so much energy. I can't wait to see people singing the lyrics back and I'm so excited. And 
the thing is you always kept a contact with uh, your audience and your fans mm -hmm. so it, it, this is really important it was important for you too oh yeah definitely i i sometimes i like i forget to reply to things and then i'm just i'll just be doing something and then i think oh i need to reply to this person i can't ever leave something without a reply because i think if people want if people are, are commenting on something i'm doing it's like i always want to reply because i think it's just important because i'm trying to build a community and i they give me so much love and i want to give i want to give it back oh thank you mm -hmm. oh that's super cool thank you last word maybe for the french audience oh. <laughs> hello hello french audience <laughs> i really hope you enjoy my album and i really hope you dance around to it and you don't care what anyone else thinks about you and you live your life for you and you dress how you want because you don't need to listen to anybody else all of that <laughs> yes that was what i was trying to think how do i say i don't listen to you but then yeah yes you need to say i don't listen to you Yeah. Do what you want. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I am the devil. I am the devil.